Look at them all, so cute. But what is wrong with this picture? <clears throat> anyone, anyone, if you're new to my channel, this is my Rapiculus Lelia, well, part of the collection of my Rapiculus Lelias. But uh, yeah, there's something not quite right here. And this is it. We have Rapiculus, 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 yeah, and so on and so forth. Dendrobium. I need that pot because I have more Rapiculus Lelias that I want actually in that pot because there is a certain concept going on here, a certain uniformity, which I would like to maintain, which I couldn't maintain. So we then switch to square pots because as they grow, they differ in sizes. But this is one of the pots I have left. It's got a dendrobium in it and it has to come out even though it doesn't need to. It's doing fabulous in this setup. And I really, really am bothered by the fact that I need to have uniformity because if I didn't have that kind of quirk in my personality, I wouldn't be disturbing this dendrobium. So let's get to it. It has to come out. It's going to go into one of these pots because I can get more of these pots and not more of these little white ones here. Let's see if we can do this gently. Let's see if it's going to be easy. I would like to be surprised, <laughs> pleasantly surprised, because it's making me nervous. And you know, <laughs> you can't get the tag out. It's a great sign, but also for this little project, not such a good sign. So you see these pots, it is a semi-hydro setup for my Dendrobium Aberrants crossed with Polysema. And then I have a little sleeve around it because it makes it look prettier. And I don't go spilling water everywhere when I move it. So this is the setup that I would like. It is going back into semi-hydro. It is going back into lava rock. It's just getting a bigger pot. <sighs> oh dear, here we go. Wish us luck. I have soaked it. Calcium, magnesium, seaweed. Just checking now to see if any of the root tips that I see in here are attached. Caution to start off with. And then if we have to get radical, then oh well, oops. But I would like to see if I can salvage some of the root tips. They're looking okay. It doesn't look like they're too attached. Let's just be careful here. See, I can hardly squeeze the pot because it is only lava rock in here. And the orchid's been in here for three years, and it could have been in here for another two years or until it outgrew its pot. But it's not coming out. <laughs> Very gentle squeezing. I'm not going to use the hammer today. I don't think I didn't plan for any kind of hammer action. <laughs> you know, I've been toying with this idea for several months now since my new Rapiculus Lelias arrived. And I was thinking, Nina, let it go. Don't worry about it. Who cares? <laughs> well, toying with that idea obviously has not done me any good. I care. <laughs> That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I hope I don't live to regret it. I mean, right now the orchid is not in active growth with the exception of the roots, which actually should be a great time to be doing this. She is in there tight. I'm pulling way harder than I'm comfortable with, but she's out. <gasps> Woo, thank goodness for that. Woo, that's great. Look at this. Oh, we're gonna be okay. <laughs> I am so glad I did this. Now I am so glad I did this. <laughs> Welcome to another drama repot at the beginning. And then we've got something as gorgeous as this. So let's not keep wasting our time. Um, shucks. Collateral damage. One root tip. It was stuck. Aw. Oh well. C'est la vie, c'est la vie. If you want to be pedantic, now let me see, can I actually get the tag off? Yes, I can. Whoop! Careful, it was going so well. Don't get ahead of yourself. So I've cracked that one in the back. 
There's a root attached to the tag, not for long. So collateral damage was three roots. Now stop touching the root ball and just see if that's the right height, because I already crocked the next size up pot with lava rock, and that is way too high, which is great. And an easy problem to solve. I have prepared my holes in the back. My nice clean pot now looks like garbage, but we'll get it nice and clean again. And I just want to make sure height. Nope, we're still too high. Talk about misjudging, hey? Try again. Lower still. You know what? I also I also prepared my Akadama here with gravel, grit, terrarium grit, aquarium gravel, all of that. It's not all in the same, but I'm describing all the options I could mix with my Akadama because of the wicking and the semi-hydro effect, but I don't think I'm going to need it. I don't think actually I'm going to need it. This root ball is just going to extend and expand perfectly. Now I do have like a little seedling growth in the back here and I'm not getting any double directions of growth from that back but I do have two leads so I'm going to just position her in the middle like so and not mess around too much. There's no need to be so cautious with regards to the direction of growth, seeing as she might push out another growth back here. Dendrobium, Latoria types are quite prone to do that. So we live in hope. I'm trying to protect that one little root that I messed up back here. And now we're going to see if I can do a gentle repot with the lava by submerging my semi-hydro pot into just plain RO water so that as I fill it up with lava rock, it just falls gently into place without bashing any more of the root ball. That is the plan. That is a lot of RO water, but hey, there are other plants that will benefit from this. Just make sure I have her exactly how I want her because I'm not doing this again. And now we just fill around with lava rock. Right, I had to switch the camera off, put it into the shade because it was heating up. Can you believe it? That's not a good sign, camera is heating up but it is very hot today, but thankfully no wind. So I'm just going to complete my little repot here or up pot to be exact by placing lava around the edges where there are a few little gaps. This is not necessary because it is a dendrobium, but it is stable in the pot and we can be a little bit more prudent about finishing the job. I have medium-sized lava for this, medium to small. I separated it out because as we're going into a bigger pot, lava doesn't necessarily have a wicking effect. It has a water retaining property. So when it's watered, it holds onto water for a long time, but as such, there is no wicking. So I do wanna make sure that I don't have too many air gaps between the lava rock so that the moisture, the retention can actually stay and be a little bit more consistent for a little bit longer of a time. So the air gaps are not very good if they're far too large. And that is why I am now just putting things into place to maintain some moisture around the roots. And I think that would be it. I've already put my tag in the back I did that off camera as I was filling up because I did not want to be stabbing around on the root ball. I know where the roots are. They're clear to see with the defining ring around them there, but still. So I put my tag in before I finished filling up 
The tag is also always on the side where my holes are so that I'd know when to pick up and how to lean the pot when I take it off the shelf, especially during the winter. Helps me from making a big mess and having to look for the holes. This way I always have a marker and yes, I'm just gonna move it a little bit to be a bit more precise, I know, it's bad. Some qualities are great, some qualities can be a detriment to oneself. So can I fill up a little bit more around the top here? Why not? There's a root tip I'm keeping an eye on back there. But other than that, you know, <laughs> with all the hesitations I've had over the months, <laughs> kicking myself for needing to have this pot for Rapiculus Lelius and not just leaving the orchid alone, I'm so glad now that I did it. See, there's a really nice root tip there. We won't be too consistent, but there's one that can grow onto that piece of lava there. And then I want to make sure that the roots that were somewhat around the pot, they were covered up, not exposed to the elements. They have kind of a similar climate around them again. And that is what I'm doing right now. She has been soaking prior, as I mentioned, with seaweed, calcium, magnesium. 40 parts per million of seaweed, 60 parts per million of calcium and magnesium. So now all she has in her reservoir is just plain RO water, which will be fine until I flush her through and water her again. Yeah, this makes me happy. I have a pot to clean. And that makes me also very happy for my Rapiculus Lelias. This was quick at the end of the day. Thank goodness it wasn't anything too dramatic. I hope that you still did enjoy this video. And I thank you so much if you did click on and you stayed to the end for keeping me company. If you have any questions regarding my setup, my methods, why I do what I do, please leave them in the comments below. I'd be very, very happy to elaborate further. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.